In today's video, we are going over a checklist that you can use for your disputes to increase your results. And the reason that we're doing this is because these things are really, really simple, but a lot of the times they are overlooked. Now, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want for your letters to get rejected just because there was something very, very simple that you missed, all right? Now, you can go down in the description and click on the link and pull this up totally free so you can print it, you can use it digitally, whatever you want. And while you're down in the description, check out the other two links there, one, to get free, totally awesome access to do-it-yourself uh, credit resources and the one-to-one -one credit consultation link is down there as well if you want to see if I can do your credit sweep for you. All right, so let's go directly over to this. Now, if you're driving, obviously, you can just listen to me and you can pull this up when you get home, but otherwise, pause this video right here, go and click on that link, pull this up and go over it with me. All right, so we're going to go one by one. So first of all, most importantly, you're going to want to include all required elements in your dispute package. This does include your personal information, like name, date of birth, address, full social security number, identification ID, SSN card and proof of address. And yes, those are three totally different documents and full dispute letter with all requirements, right? So pull up your dispute and you're going to check your letter for all dispute requirements, right? Why you're writing the letter, what you want to happen, like the letter outcome, what you're disputing, why you're disputing it, and what you want to happen, the account outcome. And you want to eliminate all filler sentences. The more you write, the less likely it is that you're going to get what you want. You want for the computer to correctly identify what you're saying and interpret the correct dispute codes because virtually everything goes through the Oscar, all right? Eliminate threats and lawyer speak. If your letter doesn't sound like a regular person wrote it, toss it and start from the beginning. Read your letter out loud to see how it sounds. And yes, I do this, all right? Make it make sense. If you're saying that you're a victim of identity theft and that accounts were open while you were in jail or overseas or anywhere else for that matter, don't also have on your credit report a new apartment lease in good standing for that same time period and the utilities and rent self-reported, right? Your credit report and arguments cannot contradict each other. Include these sections, personal info, opening paragraph for one to two sentences, accounts and reasons, closing, optional, and name. Speaking of your name, do not sign your letter, not to the bureaus, not to the creditors, and not to the collectors. When you write the collectors directly and you sign it, that same signature might just happen to get transposed over to a contract that you did not sign. And don't worry about that signature on your license because you don't send the license over to your collector, or excuse me, to the collector, and the bureaus don't forward documentation. It goes through Oscar, so they're never going to get a copy of that, all right? So just be careful. Don't sign your letters. It's totally not necessary, and um, you can obviously be putting yourself in a worse position by doing it. Now let's talk about letter limits. One letter per envelope, and that would seem obvious, but I see people, you know, fill in the whole envelope with like three different letters when the entire point is, I mean, if it were like that, you would just put all your accounts in one letter. Why would you split them up, right? 10 accounts per letter and one reason per account. Now, if you have additional documentation, like proof that you paid on time for X date or whatever it is, I would have to say, don't bother sending it because it's not going to be fo uh, forwarded to the creditor or the collector and the bureaus are not going to look at it either, even though it's considered relevant information. But if you are going to include it, I would stick it between the letter and your identification. So it's on page two, right? Because you don't want your letter to really be more than page um, one or like one and a fifth. And you're going to want to use keywords from the dispute code descriptions to make it through the filtering software. And I do have a video about this. If you go back to like, I think it was 2019 maybe, or the beginning of 2020. Now you're also going to want to check your creditor names in the account section and ensure that it's listed as shown on the report. In addition to the account numbers as shown on the report. And now the reason is if you don't do this and you have multiple accounts with one creditor, let's say that these two accounts over here, like for Capital One are positive, totally paid on time, but then I have a third that has late payments or it's charged off. By disputing that third account, if all three of those accounts start with 517-805, and that's all I'm putting on there, I'm not putting 517-805-392 you know, to differentiate between the three of them, I can be 
inadvertently disputing the positive accounts instead of the negative one, even when I'm putting the total and complete facts directly from the credit report, because remember, we're dealing with artificial intelligence, right? So you always want to put the, the information shown exactly on the credit report to ensure that this doesn't happen. All right. And your letter shouldn't ask for something that you've already asked for. Right. So look at your dispute reason log. And yes, you definitely want to keep a log uh, to make sure that you're not reusing any prior dispute reason. If you are, get rid of it and find a different reason to ask for the deletion or correction. I mean, it's really, really, really as simple as that. Now, I did leave uh, some space on here for you to add four of your own, you know, in case there's something important you want to remember, add to this checklist. And um, as I mentioned, you can use this digitally or you can print it out and, you know, keep it with you when you are disputing. Now, I'm just going to end this video here. Um, I am recording another one for you, but this was your complete checklist to writing dispute letters that get results. And they get results because they include everything that is required and nothing that is not, all right? So remember that the more you write and the longer you dispute, the less likely it is that you're going to get where you want. So that is why you want to make sure that you put everything in every single letter that needs to be there and nothing that isn't. All right, I hope you have a great weekend. Please make sure that you get to studying your factual disputes and that you're practicing before you send out your letters so that you don't send out the wrong thing and get bit in the butt. Um, have a great one. I will talk to you later. Make sure to go down into the description, click on those links and hit the like if you found value in this video um, and subscribe if you haven't done so and smash that bell for notifications. I will see you guys next time.